I'm Emily Galagoski with Women 2.0's In Conversation series. Here with Alexis Ringwald, the co-founder of Valence Energy. Uh, it's great to have you. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Congratulations on your two-month not old now acquisition. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about your vision for the company, which sort of works to provide software around mm -hmm. clean energy solutions mm -hmm. and what its implications might be. So Valence Energy, now part of Sirius Materials, we're called Sirius Energy, um, provides real-time energy management software for buildings. So basically tracks real-time data, how much are you consuming, where are you spending the energy, um, and it can automatically adjust those loads and make sure you're saving and optimizing in the best way possible. Um, and the idea is, you know, we walk into a building, we don't have any data about how much energy is being consumed. It just It's empowering end users with information about how to reduce their energy usage. And the way that your interest in clean tech started was, was sort of amazing to me, and that is <laughs> that you had interned at this um, coal fire power plant. Um, and tell me a little bit about sort of what those ramifications were in going down this sort of technology entrepreneurship mm -hmm. path. Yeah, so I, I entered Yale, Yale as a biology major, and then during my sophomore year, I ended up signing up for this random internship at a power plant, American Electric Power in Ohio. Uh, somehow flew out there for a week um, and got exposed to, to how we actually make energy. I had no clue before um, and saw that, you know, I visited the coal power plant, saw how we extract coal, burn it, and it's affecting towns nearby. And I realized my energy usage at my university by turning on a light switch was affecting people you know, somewhere else near a coal power plant. And I realized there must be alternatives. And I started researching vigorously on clean tech and became absolutely possessed by addressing climate change and figuring out the solution um, and focusing on clean energy technologies. And there are a lot of places that you could have learned more about where clean technologies are needed. You decided to go to India. Mm -hmm. Why was that? India has 1.2 billion people. It's one sixth of the world's planet of, of humanity, and uh, they have a scarcity of energy. They need electric power. And so after Yale, I went there on a Fulbright scholarship to research what clean energy technologies are they going to be implementing? What are the ones they require? How are they going to provide electricity in a sustainable way, not relying on coal, oil, gas to 1.2 billion people? Will they choose, will they leapfrog? Will they choose a more sustainable path? So I went there, was researching the entrepreneurs, the innovations coming up, the investor community to understand what the ecosystem was and how will they go forward on it. And part of that research was a sort of a road show in electric <laughs> vehicles throughout India. What were some of the technologies that had you the most excited? Yeah, I, I, so I, I saw a lot of exciting things across the country and in order to share them I decided to embark on this crazy 2500 mile road tour in solar electric cars. These are cars were made in Bangalore. We traveled with a group of uh, Indian friends and American friends and we had a solar rock band and a troupe of Bollywood dancers to document these innovations. We saw things uh, in rural areas, you know, simple things like biogas digesters where you, know, you can use you know, ex you know, cow dung to generate um, energy. Um, I also saw innovations coming out of the universities, the IITs, these are the top technical universities, researchers on solar robots and, and, uh, and innovations there. Um, I also saw training of village women on how to actually build and implement solar technology. So just the way that they're training women in villages to become the, the, the people who light up the, the, their communities. Um, and so that was really inspiring. And I think you know, even simple things like they use banana leaf plates rather than styrofoam plates. Mm -hmm. um, things that have been traditional in India, they've, done, they've been sustainable for generations. Things that we can learn over here actually in the U.S. And you're back now, you're working in Silicon Valley. Yeah. Um, what technologies are you currently excited about, either coming out mm -hmm. of the Valley or just out of the States in general? Yeah, so I've been in the Valley now a couple, like, oh, a year and a half, almost two years now after, in, after India. Um, first thing, I'm really obsessed with energy efficiency. I think before we you know, generate more energy and figure, you know, the next step, the next step there, first step is reduce our energy consumption. That's why I've been passionate about smart grid and smart buildings, making our environment, our built environment, a lot more intelligent. So by having this data, so this idea of IT coming together with energy technology. Um, so that's one. And then I think the next big thing they'll be focusing on is storage. How are we going to store energy? Like So that if we have solar panels and you it's nighttime, how do you actually store that energy and be able to use it later? If 
put yourself in the shoes of someone you know in their early 20s just like you mm -hmm. who who maybe didn't know much about energy who's interested in thinking about efficiencies and technologies that can just frankly improve the world situation yeah. what recommendations do you have for sort of getting smart in this space yeah i mean someone who want this is i think the most important issue of our generation there are six billion people on the planet now there will be nine billion in 2050 everybody needs electricity it's a huge market so figuring out how to do it sustainably you know while addressing climate change is, is a big opportunity i think having you know young people you can start taking classes in it but there's also a ton of organizations like, like clean tech open kind of organizations that are just trying to bring together startup companies in the clean tech space and you can go and try out internships with them um i think throwing yourself in there is the best way forward everyone's new to it it's kind of it's you know finally becoming fashionable to work in the field. Well, well we wish you continued success. <laughs> thank Welcome you. Welcome back from the road tour. I know it's been a little while, but yeah. exciting to hear about Alexis. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.